50th year of the, uh, the history of the, uh, the Protein Data Bank. So my topic today is um, uh, the impact of uh, open access data on uh, artificial intelligence approaches to protein structure prediction uh, and beyond. I, um, I draw your attention to the URL at the bottom right uh, for those of you who are interested in learning more about the, um, the various uh, Protein Data Bank 50th anniversary celebrations that will be going on for the remainder of the year. The, uh, the next one will be at the American Crystallographic Association meeting at the end of uh, July. There's a two, two um, half day sessions uh, on July 30 and July 31, uh, including some of the, uh, the top uh, structural and computational biologists in the world, including the Nobel laureate Francis Arnold. So let me uh, begin uh, by uh, just providing you with a very brief roadmap for the presentation that I'll give today. I'll talk about the birth of the Protein Data Bank, uh, introduce for many of you probably the Worldwide Protein Data Bank, and then um, say something about the organization that I lead, which is the US funded uh, RCSB Protein Data Bank, a member of the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership and then talk about um, how science and medicine have been enabled by open access 3D structure data, talk about the impact on protein structure prediction, and then um, uh, some thoughts of mine about the future of um, the intersection of biostructures and deep learning, and uh, a plea at the end for what we need to do to ensure that open biostructure data are sustained for the next 50 years. You've worked out by now that the Protein Data Bank must have been established in 1971. It uh, was the first, literally the first open access digital data resource in all of biology. Uh, it was established with just seven X-ray structures. It has grown enormously uh, over the past 50 years to become the single global archive for protein and DNA and RNA experimental structures. And as of today, you have open access to 178,938 structures. This is supported by the Worldwide Protein Data Bank collaboration, which I will introduce on my uh, next slide. The right panel shows some of the structures that inspired the launch of the Protein Data Bank, uh, myoglobin, hemoglobin, and two of the three first enzyme structures that were uh, determined in the um, uh, in the 1960s. Um, and uh, it was this, this um, trickle in the, in the uh, late 50s uh, through the 1960s that encouraged uh, a group of open data activists uh, long before the concept of open data was uh, embraced uh, to um, catalyze the launch of the Protein Data Bank at Brookhaven National Lab in uh, uh, New York State uh, in the US. So the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership was established in 2003 to bring together PDB data centers in the US, Europe, and Japan. Uh, it subsequently, um, and these are uh, RCSB PDB in uh, at headquarters at, at uh, Rutgers in uh, New Jersey, Protein Data Bank in Europe at uh, EBI in Hingston, and Protein Data Bank Japan, which is located at Osaka University. The, uh, more recently, uh, we've been joined uh, in this partnership by the EM Data Bank and the Biomag Res Bank. Uh, we support open access to three core archives, the PDB, the Electron Microscopy Data Bank, and the Biological Magnetic Resonance Bank. Uh, we uh, support weekly release of new 3D structures and data, uh, expert bio-curation and validation of this information all uh, in the context of the PDB archive supported by the PDB XMMSIF data standards data dictionary. We regionally share the tasks for 3D structure data deposition. Uh, you can see in this map on the bottom right that the structures from Oceania and the Americas come to us at uh, Rutgers. The structures from Europe and Africa go to PDBE in uh, the UK, and the structures from the Middle East, uh, with the exception of Israel, and uh, Asia go to Protein Data Bank Japan. Uh, all uh, of our uh, partners um, have their own websites that offer complementary services and views of identical uh, PDB data. And if you want to learn more about the 
WWPDB consortium, you can do so by seeing this more, this fairly recent uh, nucleic acid research paper. The US funded RCSB protein data bank supports fundamental biology, biomedicine and energy. We convert global data into global knowledge by supporting 50,000 structural biology PDB data depositors around the world. Uh, we do deposition and biocuration in collaboration with our worldwide protein data bank partners using the OneDEP tool. Uh, the RCSB protein data bank is responsible for archive management uh, and securing the 180,000 or so PDB structures in the archive which we um, make directly available to more than 400 different scientific data resources, serve up on our uh, research focused website, uh, rcsb.org, and also serve up on our education and outreach uh, focused website, uh, pdv101.rcsb.org. Uh, the replacement cost of PDB data is estimated today to be about US 18 billion, that's billion with a B, uh, you can learn more about what we do at the RCSB Protein Data Bank by consulting this uh, recent uh, nucleic acids research publication. The impact on fundamental biology of the Protein Data Bank is uh, undeniable. Uh, the particular uh, example that I cite here is the nucleosome core particle structure, which uh, is the most highly cited uh, PDB structure more than 10,000 times, according to Google Scholar. Today, more than 300 protein data bank structures explain in 3D how this process of DNA packaging is, works and is regulated during gene expression to open up promoters and um, genes for uh, access by the, uh, the three RNA polymerases in uh, eukaryotes and um, to, uh, to, to tightly control uh, gene expression uh, in the context of uh, different cell types. There's been also a substantial impact on energy research um, in uh, the structure I'm uh, highlighting here uh, is that of uh, Photosystem 2, which was deposited to the PDB uh, in 2004. Every PDB structure carries with it an ID code, which is typically a number followed by three alphanumeric characters. Uh, this is another highly cited PDB structure, more than 3,500 times, according to Google Scholar. And today, more than 400 PDB structures explain in 3D how photosynthesis works at the atomic level. And these structures are guiding research into how it can be harnessed by man. The impact on biomedicine, as you've heard from our previous speaker, has been substantial. Uh, we did an analysis recently uh, that was published in Structure in uh, 2019 of the impact of PDB data on US FDA drug approvals from 2010 to 2016. 210 new drugs were approved by the US FDA. And we um, were able to establish that um, 184 of these drug approvals were facilitated in some way by open access to nearly 6,000 PDB structures. Uh, and and a, 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 um, an excellent example is shown here on the right, that of the, uh, the drug Vemurafenib, which is a, um, an inhibitor of a mutant form of the BRAF kinase, which is found in 50% of individuals with late stage metastatic melanoma. Uh, the, um, another study looked at the same uh, 210 uh, new drug approvals uh, and was focusing on the impact of public research monies and showed that approximately $100 billion of NIH funding contributed to the pre-competitive research on the targets of these 210 new drugs. That was about 20% of the NIH budget from 2000 to 2016, uh, making, I think, a very strong argument uh, it combined for the importance of open access to 3D structure data and, the, and more broadly, the importance of open access to pre-competitive information about drug discovery targets. The structural biology community at large has been uh, highly impactful on uh, research focused on SARS-CoV-2 and the, uh, the pandemic. You know the timeline, late in uh, 2019, an unexplained illness was identified in Wuhan in the People's Republic of China. 
Uh, by January uh, of 2020, the causative agent was identified as a novel coronavirus, and the sequence was released on the 10th. Um, by late January, the first SARS-CoV-2 protein structure was deposited to the PDB. This was the structure of NSP5, or the main protease, coming from the Ziha Rao group uh, in, uh, in Shanghai. The PDB ID for this structure is, seven, uh, is six lima uniform seven. Today there, are, as of uh, today, there are 1,288 SARS-CoV-2 related structures in the PDB, and these are contributing directly to structure-based drug discovery and the design of uh, vaccines and the um, uh, and the characterization of uh, monoclonal antibodies that can be used for passive immunization. We've also done a great deal at the RCSB PDB in terms of outreach on SARS-CoV-2. Uh, this structure depicts uh, a single virion inside an aerosol droplet. It was a watercolor painted by David Goodsell, who is our on-staff molecular artist, structural biologist. Uh, and um, the purpose of this uh, illustration is to show the unseen enemy. It's these aerosol drops that are the vector for transmission of the virus, hence the importance pre-vaccination of masking, social distancing, and uh, personal hygiene. And I hope that you are all continuing to practice that uh, in the appropriate settings, even if you have been vaccinated fully. The impact on protein structure prediction is what we're here to talk about today. And I want to um, reflect on the major milestones, which included homology modeling, template-free methods, and then fragment assembly approaches. And then more recently, the use of evolutionary information and deep uh, machine deep learning methods. And then of course, the enormous success that was um, highlighted uh, in the CAS, most recent CAS competition by the Google DeepMind AlphaFold team. The contributing infrastructure here is substantial. I submit that none of this would have happened without open access to PDB data. Deep genomic sequence data was also important. The two competitions, CASP uh, occurring uh, episodically and CAMEO occurring weekly. Uh, are key. Uh, both of these um, uh, blind challenges are coordinated with the World Wide Protein Data Bank. The fact that everybody's publishing their data and that many are sharing computer code are critical. And as Sir Isaac Newton uh, said, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. And I would argue that these are among the giants that um, people working in protein structure prediction uh, have have um, um, benefited from. Now, thinking about the future, I am confident that there are going to be more accurate predictions of small globular uh, protein domains. I am also confident that we'll, there will be uh, predictions of multi-domain protein structures and possibly better insights into intrinsically disordered protein behavior, so-called IDPs. And I'm referring uh, specifically to phase separation. The infrastructure and infrastructure assets and needs uh, for um, the uh, advances in protein structure prediction using deep learning, of course, include the growing PDB. It's growing at about the rate of 10% per year. Uh, the uh, continued uh, CASP competition, the uh, weekly Cameo um, blind challenge, and again, uh, the importance of uh, sharing information through publication and sharing uh, ideas through computer code. In terms of IDPs, I think we need much more NMR data uh, deposited to the Biomag ResBank. Uh, and uh, those of you who are involved in uh, NMR spectroscopy in this area, I urge you to, um, to consider uh, putting your data into BMRB if you're not already doing so. Thinking about protein ligand interactions, the topic of the previ uh, previous talk, um, it's already clear from work that we were involved in uh, in the drug design data resource that the application of uh, machine learning is improving docking uh, or pose prediction. It's improving uh, scoring of predicted poses. Uh, like our previous speaker, I believe that it's going to accelerate medicinal chemistry optimization of lead compounds into potent and selective drug candidate molecules. And uh, with um, 
an ever-growing PDB, we're going to see more accurate prediction, I would argue, of off-target binding to understand and hopefully reduce medication side effects, uh, particularly the toxicity uh, concerns that were described at the end of uh, the previous uh, presentation. In terms of infrastructure assets and needs, the open access PDB data is going to continue to play an important role. Uh, KELP is a weekly uh, blind challenge, uh, again, coordinated with the PDB that uh, is run by the team that um, uh, initiated the drug design data resource, the D3R. And I urge you to, uh, to look at uh, KELP and contribute to it if you're doing um, uh, docking publication, sharing of code. But what we really need here, and this is what the drug design data resource was intended for, is thousands more co-crystal structures from industry to be deposited to the PDB. So we get a much richer data set looking at co-crystal structures, particularly co-crystal structures for a compound series wherein the methyl ethyl, et cetera, uh, drill was run so that we can visualize in 3D the impact of the small changes in the chemistry that, uh, as our previous speaker uh, uh, commented on, can lead to quite substantial changes in um, potency and uh, in, uh, in selectivity. We also need uh, to resurrect the drug design data resource through to, uh, as, uh, or an equivalent drug design data resource too. Uh, this was a blind challenge for um, uh, docking and scoring using uh, compound series and co-crystal structures accompanying uh, from, uh, from industry. And it, uh, it showed that there's an enormous uh, way to go here. And I believe that AI, machine learning, deep learning is going to play a significant role. The other uh, context in which I think we're going to see an impact from deep learning is that of protein-protein interactions, prediction of binding interfaces, prediction of interaction energetics, and a better and more quantitative understanding of protein interaction networks. Uh, I think this is going to accelerate the protein chemistry optimization that's currently being done for both monoclonal antibodies and other types of biologics. Uh, and that can only be good for, uh, for patients around the world. The infrastructure assets and needs that we have in this regard continue, of course, to rely on the open access PDB and the blind challenge uh, run by the community and coordinated with the Worldwide Protein Data Bank. And I'm referring here, of course, to the Capri challenge, uh, peer reviewed publications, sharing of code. And what we need are many more 3D EM structures deposited to the PDB, because this is now the principal source of information in the PDB on multi-protein complexes. The um, uh, PDB structures uh, in coming from 3D EM are growing at a very rapid pace, and I believe they will soon constitute close to 50%, if not more than 50% of structures deposited in, the, in a given year. Uh, X-ray crystallography is currently um, still uh, contributing about 85% of structures, uh, 3D EM more than 10%, and uh, NMR less than, um, uh, less than a few percent. I've emphasized the importance of open biostructure bio data, and we have um, very considerable challenges and um, uh, equally important uh, considerable opportunities ahead of us. Um, we need to see interoperation of primary data resources with yet more uh, of, uh, of this uh, type of resource, and I'm referring specifically to uh, the importance of bringing in light microscopy data, cross-linking data, et cetera. We need to um, have facile interoperation of primary data resources, such as the PDB, uh, with related knowledge bases. And I think Uniprot has been a leader in this regard. Uh, access to uh, data generated within uh, biopharmaceutical companies represents another challenge, but one that I think we must resolve. Uh, and the opportunity here will be modeling of cells, tissues, organs, and even populations of organisms, such as microbiomes. The infrastructure and assets and needs um, to support this include the WWPDB partnership, which is uh, thriving and will soon be uh, celebrating its uh, 20th anniversary. Uh, open access to um, PDB to electron microscopy data bank, Biomag ResBank, and many other primary data resources. 
uh, open access to knowledge bases such as CATH, SCOP, Uniprot, NCBI, et cetera. And the need here, the major need is for researchers, data stewards, science funders, and industry leaders to develop sustainable funding models to ensure that the next 50 years of open access biostructure data, uh, it's a struggle to fund the PDB on an annual basis uh, in, in, at every one of the three WW uh, PDB data centers that take care of the PDB, whether it's in uh, Japan, Europe, or the US, it's a struggle because this is not conventional research. And um, when times get tough in research, uh, public research funding agencies like NSF, NIH, BBSRC, et cetera, the first thing they do is look to cut infrastructure so they don't have to cut research. The problem with cutting infrastructure is no infrastructure, no research. So uh, with that, I will acknowledge the enormous contributions made by the uh, RCSB PDB team. Um, I'm speaking today at the tip of the spear, which is being held by a very large number of highly competent individuals uh, who, are, uh, who are making all of this possible and ensuring that you get uh, the data that uh, you need uh, on a timely basis. We are funded by the National Science Foundation, three different institutes at the National Institutes of Health and the US Department of Energy. Um, we are hosted by uh, Rutgers, UC San Diego, and the San Diego Supercomputer Center, and most recently, the University of California, San Francisco, bringing in the expertise of Andre Sale and his team. I've uh, talked about the importance of the Worldwide Protein Data Bank, and I, um, I thank you uh, for, uh, for your, uh, your attention. And above all, I thank the nearly 50,000 depositors of PDB data around the world and uh, the uh, millions of users uh, of uh, rcsb.org and pdb101.org and either direct or indirectly uh, uh, data from, uh, from the Protein Data Bank, EM Data Bank, and uh, Biomes, Biomag ResBank, the three core archives supported by the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership. I'm going to leave my final slide up here uh, during the Q&A uh, so that you can see that there are some interesting opportunities for employment available uh, at um, the RCSB PDB, both in New Jersey at Rutgers and in San Diego at um, UCSD. There are scientific software uh, developer jobs available on both coasts, and there's an opening for a postdoctoral researcher in uh, computational biology at uh, UCSD. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll stop. Thank you very much.